so welcome back to my uh, channel, EV Off-Road. I apologize for folks that were following along uh, closely with the uh, build of the Off-Road Ionic 5. Um, I think this is in line with the sort of theme. This is uh, electrification of a classic um, runabout boat. This is a 1962 Dorset Catalina. It's a beautiful fiberglass uh, vessel uh, that uh, we successfully electrified. Um, I, I also want to briefly mention the battery technology in here. This is a solid state battery. Uh, we got this from Solid State Marine. Um, we're not going to dive too much into detail on that today because I think it's really going to be the star of the discussion. So I want to devote a separate video to really talk about the battery technology. So in fairness to the folks that were following the channel, I should speak a little bit about uh, the range associated with towing uh, a boat of this, of this type. Th this boat is uh, just over a thousand pounds uh, by itself. Uh, and then we have a motor, electric motor, and a couple batteries uh, that give us another 200 pounds. And of course, um, a trailer at about 600 pounds. So all in, um, we're about 2,000 pounds or so. And that's about the upper limit of what the Ionic 5 is supposed to tow. Um, I think in Europe it can go up to 3,000 pounds, but uh, we're at about 1,000, uh, excuse me, at about uh, 2,000 pounds max rating here. So this is about all we want to tow. And that's probably for a good reason. Um, <clears throat> if we look at um, back in the original video, I talked about range for the, for the EV in general. Remember, we we don't have a stock Ionic 5. We lifted the uh, vehicle about two inches or so. I have off-road tires, a roof rack, um, even a tire on the top at times. So we took, you know, a very efficient EV uh, that usually gets on the order of around 260, uh, 240 miles on the highway going about 60, 70 miles an hour. I took it, I took it down uh, closer to 200 with all the modifications that we did. Um, but now that now we take an even bigger hit, of course, when we're towing, right? When we tow, uh, we're even about half that, maybe down to about 120 miles or so. So, um, you know, that's that's a big deal. Um, and you know, why is that relevant? You know, if you're going to a local uh, pond or or just uh, a local ramp, uh, maybe not such a big deal if you're only going 20, 30 miles away. But you know, I took this baby up to up to uh, uh, Newport, Rhode Island, uh, so all the way up 95. <laughs> Uh, through the tolls. Um, I probably paid a little extra for tolls. I don't think I did that right. But, um, you know, when you have to stop every 120 miles, uh, you know, it's not that easy to pull into a charger when you have, we have the trailer, so you often have to unhook it. So it becomes a kind of a big hassle. So, okay, so let's talk about the, uh, the build process a little bit. I'm not going into any real great detail, but I think our viewers may have a, a little bit of interest in in some of the specifics. It's a fiberglass vessel, um, really popular in the 60s. Um, it was completely restored, expertly restored by the name, by the name of uh, Jay Sigmund. Uh, Jay said I could mention his name, so here it is. Um, Jay did a really ground up, uh, full renovation of this boat. Um, I didn't do that much to it when I bought it from Jay. Of course, the electric modification, and I'll show you in a bit, I did add some extra, um, some extra wood, some mahogany in the back just to hide the batteries. Uh, of course, I then had a, I, I added two seats as well, involved some fiberglass and, and a little bit of painting uh, with some speckle painting. Not easy, by the way. But let's take a look at that uh, cabin. Let's go inside that cabin a little bit. So if we open these cabin doors, these beautiful mahogany cabin doors, we can see uh, bench seating for a few adults and easily sleeps two two adults. This is probably uh, seven feet all the way to the uh, bow. Let's show you the cockpit a little bit. Um, as I mentioned, Jay Sigmund did the line share of work, really built this whole console by scratch. Um, I added just a few things, including some, some LED lighting, um, and of course, I did have to put our voltmeter and, and essentially our fuel tank for our electric batteries. Um, that gives me a readout. I can also do it by Bluetooth, but, but it's good to have it here on the dash. 
Um, I added this iPhone charger as well. It's a handy um, wireless charger. And of course the Lavorsi throttle. The whole system works, works really well. I mentioned uh, this is a Dorset Catalina. We, the emblem on the other side is actually broken. And my son, my 14 year old son was kind enough to 3D model and, and print a, a PLA version of it. So I just have to paint it. So he did a beautiful job. So a little shout out to Henry for, for doing a bang up job on the, on the replacement for the other side. Pretty cool. All in, we have about $35,000 into this vessel. Uh, the boat itself is about, about uh, $10,000. Um, I did purchase a new uh, trailer that was about $3,000. The electric motor is about $9,000. It's an Elko EP50. Uh, the EP50 probably has closer to about 35 horsepower, not 50 horsepower, but um, nonetheless, it, it's a solid 35 horsepower horsepower so and it's quite light uh, the motors um, uh, really only about um, just under 200 pounds so it's, it's a pretty light motor um, and then we have uh, so that was about nine thousand dollars the motor um, and then of course there are the batteries now <laughs> the batteries are um, as I said we're going to go into that in more detail they're really sort of special batteries solid state batteries solid state marine so it's not a liquid lithium ion it is a solid state lithium uh, I bought two of them. They're 48 volts, 210 amp hours each. So we're running at 96 volts uh, f coming from both of those in, in series. And you know that, that can generate up to, the motor will pull about 24,000 watts at any given time. So that's, that's quite a lot. Uh, but those two batteries, um, um, again, what I think I'll just mention is that they're about half the weight of lithium, regular lithium ion, and they'll last uh, probably twice as long, maybe up to 20 years. So um, at about uh, $6,000 each, so about $12,000 for the batteries all in, um, it, it might, might seem like a little bit of a gut punch initially, but, but when you do the calculations over 20 years of not having to pay for fuel, the instant performance associated with, uh, and torque associated with electric power, uh, they're, they're, they're actually quite attractive. What I did was add, add a charge port here so that um, we can just, when we come home, I can just open up this uh, socket and charge both, both chargers. Uh, they each draw, uh, you know, in maybe 700 watts each, 750, 800 watts each. So I can easily charge this up for one outlet that will get the batteries charged overnight in about 12 hours. Um, we're not probably going to get the ultimate range that we will with a gas setup, but if you manage the throttle, you can, you can do pretty well. So I want to talk about that performance just a little bit. So again, this is about um, 1,100 pound boat. If you add the 200 pound motor, and 100 pounds each for the batteries, another 200 pounds, and then a couple passengers. You're, you're up at about 1,800 pounds for this, this whole uh, all-in with this vessel. With about 35 horsepower wide open, she'll get up to about 24, 25 miles an hour. Uh, goes up on plane at, at um, about 14 miles an hour. Um, it's still probably a little underpowered of what you might want to do if you if you really cared about performance. You know, you want you know sort of twice that power. This boat came when I bought it had an old two-stroke engine, uh, Merck 650 uh, over you know probably 60 65 horsepower, and it, this thing you know sort of booked at 30 miles an hour easily, uh, with a couple passengers in it. With the electric setup, I was really happy that we can get up to plane at all. Uh, and do it comfortably, certainly with one or two people. Once you get uh, three or four people and you're sort of waiting that down in the back, it really has a hard time getting out of the hole um, and it's really not set up that way. Um, the other thing to remember, and this is true for a gasoline setup as well, um, you know, where you're riding on that, um, you know, the perform that performance curve really dictates your range. Uh, and what I mean by that is um, it's got a very efficient range down at the lower 
speed realm, you know, sort of four, five, six miles an hour, uh, then it really drops off uh, when, you, when you're trying to push out of that hole and get up to speed. When you're at about 10 miles an hour, you are burning wattage, right? Really sucking up. And so your range may go from a really as high as almost 40 miles with this at six miles an hour uh, to maybe 10 uh, miles or, or so, 10 or 12 miles if you're cruising around at, at 10 miles an hour. Now, interestingly, if you push out, out of that hole up onto plane and you're cruising at 20, 22 miles an hour, your efficiency goes back up again and, and, and this gets you know, probably 20, 25 mile range. So in summer, you know, you wanna kind of cruise around at six miles an hour all day, five hours, no problem, six miles an hour with this. Uh, you can get up to speed if you've got to shoot out of the way of a you know, big ship or something, no problem. Um, but uh, you really, um, if you were at full wide open throttle, you'd be lucky if you get 45 minutes, maybe an hour out of this with the current setup. Now we can put some more batteries in it and I may do that uh, you know, we may want to kind of push the weight a little bit more forward if we do that. Um, but you know, they're, they're expensive. And for my purposes, my son and I like to go out and, you know, do a little fishing every once in a while. Um, you know, we like to enjoy the sun and the water for a few hours. This is plenty for us and it works great. <laughs>